Hello and welcome to my first OpenGL screencast. I'm going to be talking a little bit about OpenGL 2.x. Uh, um, we'll be using GLUT in these screencasts. There are several alternatives to GLUT, such as SDL and QT. Um, I will link to those in the show notes, in the blog post. Um, they may be more appropriate for what you want to do. So let's just get started here and we can uh, take a look at um, some OpenGL. So I'll be using C for these screencasts um, and we'll just start from the top and kind of work our way through. Today we'll be doing a hello world. We'll just kind of draw a window and we'll draw a triangle within that window. So just some basics first. We're going to go ahead and include just standard library type stuff um, just for the sake of including those. Um, you want to get used to that kind of stuff and C um, as we scroll down here we're going to include uh, defined GLX prototypes. This allows us to use the GL extensions, uh, which I won't really go into much detail uh, about those. I am on a um, Mac, so I have this if def for Apple here because they decided to put their glut in a different location than Windows and Linux. So if you want to make sure your application is uh, cross-supported, you're going to want to do that. Uh, down here, we're just defining a couple global variables, which uh, we'll just be using in our application. Um, the first being the dimensions, um, the next one being the window name that we'll make for our application. So, um, here we go. Hold on a second. All right. So, here we go. We got the display scene stub here. We got a reshape stub which will be used to uh, reshape when the called when the reshape function happens. And then of course your standard uh, main function here. So um, let's get started real fast and we'll start stubbing out this um, this main function. So the first thing you're going to want to do uh, when you use glut is you're going to want to initialize. So that's going to be the glut init command you're going to pass it in any kind of args um, that you have um, from the command line. Next, you're going to want to do a glut init, if I can spell today, display mode. And you're going to want glut RGB for your color type. And we're going to request a double buffered um, uh, window, which is just going to help uh, improve a. Uh, it allows us to draw one thing while another thing is not being drawn. So you kind of want to get in the habit of generally using that. It's going to help uh, improve the performance of your application. Um, next, we're going to want to need a window size. Um, for this application, we'll just do a 500 by 500. That sounds good. And then we're going to create the window. And we're going to use that window name variable that I said above. And we want to display it using that display function. So these are callbacks. So that's the way uh, OpenGL works. So uh, with GLUT anyway. So we say GLUT display function, and then we give it the name of the function that it will be called back when that is called. So as you can see, we're going to be displaying the reshape, or excuse me, uh, displaying display function. And reshape, we're going to just use that reshape function. And then the glut main loop. That is our loop. So that is basically saying go. And from then on, we will be um, working with uh, OpenGL. Uh, so here we go in this uh, display function. You know, I want to do a GL clear. And this basically, by clearing the buffer bit, that allows us to uh, just kind of set everything back to its default and get it out of the way. GL load identity. Um, if you haven't done much uh, matrix math, uh, linear algebra, you might want to go ahead and review that on Khan Academy. It's highly recommended. Um, this just basically loads the identity matrix into our... Um, into our matrix mode and 
the identity matrix is just one down all the columns and we're, we're generally working with a four by four matrix here uh, representing the uh, X, Y, Z, and W variables. If this is foreign to you, then just trust me, it, it works here. So then at this point, you generally draw something and we'll come back to that in a second. So finally, we're going to do want to do GL flush and neglect swap buffers. And neglect swap buffers is used with, because we're using double buffering. And GL flush just forces it to go to the screen. So now let's go down to this GL reshape function. And first, let's go ahead and grab a the width to height ratio. So we'll say if the height is greater than zero, then let's go ahead and throw on this with the height. Otherwise, let's give it a one-to-one -one ratio. So first we want to define a viewport in OpenGL. And that's just the, the window that we're actually going to see. And we're going to make it just the entire window so that, that 500 by 500 is what we're going to end up saying what it is. And that's the width and height that's passed in uh, to this, when the reshape function is called. So now we're generally in the other matrix mode where I said the, the model view earlier and we want to switch to a, a different one and so since OpenGL is a state based that means it stays the way it is it's not really object oriented and it kind of goes down and you have to return state um, as you go so we're going to switch over to the projection matrix which is kind of what you're actually seeing and what you're doing so once again we're going to load the identity within the projection matrix and then we're going to go ahead and set up a box that we're going to be able to view and so for this uh, we're going to use a orthographic um, orthogonal excuse me projection box and there's perspective and orthogonal um, the difference being between the two is orthogonal everything is the same shape and size versus um, perspective, everything is kind of like in real life where things further away um, will be uh, smaller versus things closer are going to be bigger. So basically we're going to just take our dimension uh, variable for and then say times the width to height ratio that we defined above. And these are going to be the different sides of the uh, Ortho, uh, orthogonal box that we have. So now, since I said it's, we're on a state machine, we got to switch back to that model view matrix, and let's load the identity in, and that should be good. Um, let's go ahead and run this real fast, um, so we can do a, a make, and then say executables 01. And there's our box. So now let's go ahead and add, draw something in there to make it actually interesting. So for this, let's draw a triangle. Um, so there's lots of different polygon types and lines and uh, interesting shapes that you can make. We're just going to be using uh, OpenGL straight not using glut to make any of these. So we're going to define a beginning and ending of a triangle. Um, for this we're just going to make it a polygon. So that means we're going to need to define at least three vertexes um, to make the shape. And let's just make something really easy in two dimensions. And we'll, we'll have different colors for the sides and you can see how OpenGL decides to interpolate those. So uh, the standard is GL and then color and then you'll have um, like for this, you'll have 3F, which means three floats. So we can define, and these are an RGB. And if you do 4F, you're going to have the alpha on there um, for uh, opacity. So this is, the f we're defining a color. And then we're going to the same thing. 2F means two floats. So we're working in two dimensions here. And let's define the 0.5. So we have a color and we have a vertex. And now we can go ahead and copy those. And we can say this vertex is at 0, 
one, excuse me, that's the color. And this one is at one, zero. And let's make this vertex at negative, uh, let's do five, negative five, and we'll do negative five, negative five. All right, so we've defined, and like I said, it's a state machine, so as your state changes, it just moves around here. So we have color, vertex, so that color belongs to this vertex, or is specified at that vertex. The next color, next vertex, next color, next vertex. So let's go ahead and make clean, and make this, and run it again. And as you can see, we have a triangle, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you, this has helped you get started with uh, OpenGL.